opportunity to stand in such an appointed place at such an appointed time. To God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and to the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and our Counselor, certainly to this esteemed pastor, my dear uncle, friend, and brother in Christ, Pastor Daniel Blaine Sr., to these ministers of the gospel, to the people of God who meet on this call, Mount right. Aaron right. Church family, Amen. Mount Aaron Baptist Church of Barbara, Texas. It's a blessing to be in the house. Yes, 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 Amen. It's a blessing to be here again. And I want to invite your attention to the sixth chapter of the New Testament letter to Galatians. So the hour is spent and we won't keep you long. If you'll turn to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to read, beginning with verse 6, when you hear it, reading from the New King James translation of Scripture. Come on now. Read the passage to some of the Bible readings. Apostle Paul writes these words, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. All right. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Yes. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Yes. Yes. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Yeah. Right. Yes. And let us not grow weary mm -hmm. while doing good. Yes. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Yeah. King James says something like we shall reap if we faint not. Therefore, verse 10, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Right. I want to read, <clears throat> I want to read from the message very quickly, the same passage. It says, according to Eugene Peterson's translation, be very sure now you have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Don't be misled. Right. No one makes a fool of God. Mm. Right. When a person plants, he will harvest. Person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All, right. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. So go for reading of God's word and the Amen. Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and obeying of his word. All flesh is like grass. Yes, sir. And glory are the accomplishments of people. That's what glory means. Yeah. Well. The accomplishments that you have. The glory of the accomplishments of people are like the flowers of the field. You all know that grass withers. That's right, right, that's right. right. And flowers fall away. That's right. But the word of God right. shall stand.
stand for it. Thank God that there are people here today who I know are standing on the word of God. I want to talk for a few moments, if you'll be prayerful with me, prayer and preaching go together. I want to talk from this topic, when due season seems overdue. When due season yes, sir. Yes. seems over oh, The Holy Bible is not just a book about God. The Bible is rather a book about God and people. The Bible to me is like, or somewhat like, a ledger. A ledger is an account book of final interest. Yeah. in which business transactions are recorded. Mm -hmm. right now. now, when you transact, to transact means to carry on or conduct business. Yeah. Yeah. It means to negotiate, mm -hmm. right. to conduct activities, etc., and bring them to a conclusion or a settlement. All right. All right. All right. Now, in terms of psychology, a transaction is an interaction of an individual with one or more other person, mm -hmm. especially as influenced by their assumed relational roles of parent, child, or adult. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So in terms of a family, uh, transactions go on all the time between a husband and wife, mm -hmm. yeah. between a wife and husband, between parents and children. Yeah, right. yeah. There are some understood transactions that have to occur. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Children can't provide for themselves. All right, All right. That's why parents are in charge of providing yeah. for their children. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. And so transactions have to uh, uh, take place between people, between yeah. uh, those in various kinds of relationship. All right. mm -hmm. See, therefore, the Bible then, <laughs> this ledger of yeah. this divinely inspired record book yeah, right, yeah. tells the story of the <laughs> history of God's dealing with his chosen people yeah. Yeah. in particular. Yeah. Come on, Rabbi. However, God created all people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God didn't just create his chosen people. Yes, sir. Right. He is not just the God of Israel, yeah, yeah. but he is the God of all of the nations of the earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are those who acknowledge him, and, and there are also those who choose not to acknowledge him. Uh -huh. but, but in God's ledger book, yeah, yeah. we see God's dealing not just with those who acknowledge him, but we see his dealings with those, even those who choose not to acknowledge him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the holy ledger that we're talking about, this record book, this, this Bible, these 66 books of the Bible, uh, 39 Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the ledger book that I'm talking about. God brought it into existence. Yeah. Yeah. And in it, he allowed the history of his dealings with all people to be recorded. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I can hear the psalmist in 103, uh, Psalm, Psalm 100, uh, that third verse where, where the songwriter writes, Know that the Lord, he is God. Yeah, yeah. It is he who has made us, yes, sir. and not we ourselves. Uh -huh. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Yeah, yeah. Now, now there are all kinds of legends. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, I can, I can uh, make the assumption that right here this morning, mm -hmm. uh, that there are quite a number of you who have uh, a checkbook on you, all right. and you have your check uh, checkbook ledger with you. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a good idea just to carry your checkbook. Come on, preacher. Yeah. If you're a wise person, you also will carry your checkbook ledger. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And maybe you say, I don't need a ledger. I can keep it all in my head. But yeah. keep on telling yourself that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After a while, you, you might start to believe it, but it's a good idea to carry your ledger. And, right. and even if you have carbon check copy, yeah, yeah. a ledger is a good idea. Yes, sir. So you can you can verify what was spent, when it was spent, yeah. on what it was 
thinking in their minds about uh, how this all relates to what I'm saying about a uh, ledger uh, and the Bible being like a ledger. But listen in on uh, chapter 3 of Galatians. Listen to what Paul writes in uh, chapter 3, beginning with verse 5. The apostle writes, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and right. works miracles among you, mm -hmm. does he do it by the works of the law mm. or by the hearing of faith? Yeah, yeah. He's in an argument with his enemies called the Judaizers. Uh, uh, he's talking rather to the, the members of the church who have been influenced right. by the Judaizers. Yeah, yeah. And this is what Paul goes on to say. <coughs> that he says in verse 6, just as Abraham believed God, yeah, yeah. and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, now follow me here. When, when I talk about the Bible being like a legend, yeah, yeah. being like an account book, yeah. a record book, listen to this. The, the English word in this verse, accounted, also rendered in some translations as credited or reputed, is translated from the Greek word. Uh, the Greek word uh, is Eli go Gostai, mm -hmm. which comes from Logizomai. The meaning of those Greek words mean to reckon, to count, to compute, to calculate, yeah. to count over. Come on, come on. Come on. And what yeah. Paul is saying is that because Abraham believed God, right. God right. gave Abraham something. Right. Come on, Reverend. Right. Come on. Come on. Abraham yeah. believed God. God put it on Abraham's account and, yeah. right. and made it in his favor. Right. He, he blessed Abraham. He, yeah. he dealt with Abraham uh -huh. on a in a legal kind of way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is, in fact, there is a translation called the Waymouth, a New Testament translation that says it like this. Even as Abraham believed God and his faith was placed to his account, as righteousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, now you got to remember that God, our Heavenly Father, is a business minded God. All right. All right. All right. You, you, you know that the, the, the late Reverend I. Lewis used to sit there in his pulpit and say time and time again, don't play with God. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. Anybody remember he would say, don't play with God? Yes, sir. Like, he's not playing with you. Yes, yes, sir. God yes, is a business minded God. In, right. in parable after Jesus talked about God as the landowner, uh -huh. as the business owner. Yeah, yeah. And, and especially in the Bible days when land was such a commodity of wealth. And even today, I heard someone say years ago, young man, you get land, you, if you buy property, you want to build your house, remember, they're not making any more land. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that land and real estate is that right. kind of commodity. Yeah, yeah. Well, God is a landowner. Right. In fact, the land that God owns is the universe. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. just the world that we stand on, yeah. but the stars in the sky, the planets in vast space, all of that belongs to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a business-minded God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, we learn from the book of Genesis and throughout the rest of the Bible that God is a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God. Yeah, yeah. And you do know that a covenant is a contract. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what a covenant is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A covenant is a transaction, a, an agreement between one or uh, well, two or more parties. Yeah, yeah. Listen to what God says to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17. Mm -hmm. uh, when Abram was 99 years old, All the right. Lord appealed to Abram and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Yeah, yeah. Walk before me and be blameless. Yeah. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. All right. God is a covenant yeah. maker. Yes, sir. And I like to always add covenant keeper. Yes, All right. All right. right. Yeah. God. Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah. Well, there are people today who will make an agreement with you mm -hmm. and go back on their 